Good morning. Namaskar. Welcome to Tech Club 2 webinar series of ECRT uh, as well as streaming on uh, YouTube as well as uh, uh, Facebook. Mari Irochu Padorochu Padorochu Lomi Andaki Sahajatan Teri Chesu. I welcome uh, uh, Dr. Shobhaga to today's session. Good morning, ma'am. And I also welcome uh, Prokri Shinvas Garu from uh, Digital Education. Good morning, sir. Mari Irochu topic is very much interesting topics. Let's see the topic describing things, people, events, and routines. Every day, this is the need of our actual life. One to introduce these things, or uh, they need to tell something about the what are the events happened. So very very interesting thing. So before going to going to into the topic, uh, I request uh, Pokhar Shinwas Garu to introduce uh, Shobha Ma'am to the viewers. Yeah, thank you, Smile. Uh, good morning, everybody. So now uh, we have uh, uh, Shobha Madam with a new topic, and uh, day by day our view viewers are also very enthusiastic and. Uh, uh, viewing the uh, program well. Uh, um, Shobha Ma'am is a, a teacher, a researcher and a teacher educator currently working as a uh, assistant professor of English at Anna University, Chennai. Uh, uh, she is a gold medalist uh, uh, in Masters in Education and a TE as well and a USA certification in, in, in teaching English. So Ma'am, we heartily welcome. Mm, please start the session. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. A very good morning to all the teachers of Andhra Pradesh, Shubhodayam. So now in the spoken English series, we have been learning several items that can help us to speak correctly and fluently. So yesterday, again, we had a very interesting topic, introducing yourself. You saw how, how us took turns in talking. Now, these are all commonplace situations like these are commonplace uh, happenings where we will be also introducing ourselves when we meet new teachers when we are able to introduce ourselves in a very simple and clear manner so every day you are listening to Srinivas Garu introducing me similarly when you are also introducing yourself just prepare some words and keep so that you can introduce yourself in a much effective manner. Because they say first impressions are the best impressions. And always remember, there is no second chance to make a first impression. I'm repeating it. There is no second chance to make a first impression. So the impression that you create when you are introducing yourself is very important. So the best way to imbibe, to absorb all the ideas that are being discussed in this webinar will be to play it over and over again, to listen to these structures, to make note of them and to practice it. I hope you remember what I told you in one of the previous sessions, use it or lose it. If you want to keep it and remember it, you have to keep using it. So only when we use the structures, only when we use the words that are being offered to us, we will be able to use them very effectively. They will be in our active vocabulary. I hope you remember the difference between passive and active vocabulary. So if you want all these phrases to be in your active vocabulary, you will have to use it. So with that, let us go to today's session. Today's session is called describing. Describing is a very important language function because every day there is something that we are describing. Usually we describe the day whenever your friends call you. Now say for example, you're in Vijayawada and somebody is calling you from Vishakapatnam. So how is it? How is the day today? It is very hot here. You have to say, the weather, whether it is very hot or cold. So you will have to use certain expressions to describe the day. So usually when our children come from school to our home or when our husband. So now, as I was telling you, describing is one of the key aspects of communication. 
so when you are learning spoken english skills you will have to describe several ideas that come to our mind you will have to describe things around you describe objects describe people also if you had looked through the reading material i would have given you certain exercises certain examples of describe people how to describe your day so let us keep all these things in mind so we are learning communication via language functions and today's topic is descriptions let us move on here is the quotation for today in creating someone's character i reveal my own i hope all of you will be remembering one of buddha's famous stories when buddha goes to a village he asks one of the villagers how is this village that person will describe the village as full of bad people he will talk about people who are living there as robbers and cheats and then buddha will go to another village he will ask one person how is this village that person will say all positive things about the village now buddha's disciples asked him though the first person said the village is bad the villagers were actually very good it was a very nice place to stay and the second person said that the village was very good but it turned to be the opposite not everyone was very friendly there so they asked buddha why do you keep asking people to describe buddha smiled you know the smile of enlightenment and he said when people describe something around them it is not revealing the character of what they are describing but they are expressing their own character so the words that we use to describe something is actually revealing our own character that is why i always say to anybody around me use positive words use words that create lot of happiness especially with children you know very well that children are great imitators and all of us have to give something great for them to imitate so we have to use words that are cheerful that are enthusiastic because words are powerful right the limits of your language determines limits of your universe so let's move on what are we describing today so this is the road map for today's session we are going to try and see how we can describe things or objects how we can describe people how we can describe certain events and also how to describe routines routines refers to our day to day activities describing oneself so first of all it is very important to know how to describe oneself so in introducing itself we saw how to describe yourself but let us see how well can we do it now imagine this is you this is a teacher so how he would describe himself now say for example he is saying i am a very diplomatic person diplomatic in the sense even if there is a problem they know how to handle it in a very smooth manner i am a very attentive person all of you are very attentive i know that you are all ready to type the answers in the chat box whenever i am asking you are such attentive students he is saying i am a trustworthy person i can be trusted i can be depended dependable loyal polite strategic strategic means knowing how to handle a situation adopting the best strategies i am a conscientious person if you are conscientious it means that you are very honest you listen to your conscience you do things that are right and appropriate i am a thoughtful person 
respectful gentle and considerate considerate means being very kind so imagine these words the person is using to describe himself here are some more words for you here are some more words like devoted diligent diligent means very clever attentive having presence of mind efficient working very well energetic excellent gentle hard working industrious also means hard working knowledgeable proactive this is a very good word i am a very proactive person i go and do things i don't wait for someone to come and tell me to do these things that kind of a person is a proactive person productive resourceful for my students i am very resourceful whenever students come and ask me i help them out so many of you are like that skillful and thoughtful so look at all these words these words are all called describing words more and more i am hoping you are increasing your word bank so what you are going to do now is you are going to type your answer in the chat so what are you going to type about you are going to describe yourself in three words just use three words and describe yourself i am you can choose any word there is no need to select words only from this selection you can use any word and you can try and describe yourself okay so i am giving you 30 to do this try and type some words magnificent loyal and handsome so dhama madhu is telling us he is magnificent handsome i am efficient can we use three words three words please i am very act eranki anupama says i am energetic active and talented wow and then durga prasad bonangi sir says straight forward i am straight forward hard working a very positive person person somebody has typed i am an incredible person so the youtube chat is just running very fast i am not able to read it loyal active hard working pita syam kumar says i am very confident wonderful so all your answers are just pouring in sportive mercury and energetic now mercurial this is a word describing word which means that your mood suddenly changes mercurial okay so you we have to be very careful when we are using these kinds of describing words okay that was the first activity for today very good a round of applause for all those who participated very actively let us move on now you described yourself that is very good how can we describe things or objects there are many describing words again if we look at the grammatical aspect of it we will be thinking about adjectives right so we are learning grammar vocabulary implicitly not directly but implicitly all of us know these ideas shapes of objects so when you are trying to describe an object you have to describe it based on its shape so square circular rectangular all of you know oblong pyramid solid concave geometrical symmetrical pointy twisted and three dimensional so these are some words some describing words we can use when we are talking about the shape of the object okay so here is a picture 
you can see so many shapes on it now say for example this is a gift wrapper and, and i am trying to describe the gift wrapper i am telling you please take the gift wrapper you are asking me which one the one which has so many dash shapes on it so what shape would you say i'm giving you 10 seconds to choose the right answer so this is the list you can choose any word from the list you can type the answer in the chat box describe these what is one word you will use type these shapes look at the shapes carefully and this is the list of words choose one word that will describe all the shapes you have to choose only one word i can see all the answers coming in good job all of you circular triangular some of you have written geometric that is the answer very good so these shapes can be described as geometric okay let us move on now when we talk about colors i am not going to talk about blue red, red yellow because i know that all of us know all the colors but there is another way to describe the color itself whether it is dark vibrant colors very vibrant today if you see my ppt it is very vibrant so many colors are there neon so i can see the word neon repeated pale or dull bright monochrome refers to a single color festive very happy blended or drab drab also refers to dull so these are all certain words that we can use to describe the colors now it is always better to learn these words and also use them whenever you are describing so here after say for example today you just decide whenever i'm looking at a color i'm not only thinking okay this is brown color this is white color i'm also going to think what kind of mood it is evoking whether it is vibrant or drab or monochrome okay so here i have another question for you how will you describe this color so there are so many words i used in the previous slide how will you describe the color i am showing the picture again which word do you think is the most suitable to describe the color so some of you have started typing your answers which word will you use will you use dark pale bright festive drab blended so which word colorful obviously it's very colorful monochrome monochrome means one color you can see so many colors now all the right answers are coming festive that is the answer so this particular color shows that it is very festive now neon what is this neon neon refers to those bright colors those fluorescent kind of colors you know these days when we are buying color sheets we also get many neon colors earlier they were not available but now when you buy these post it notes small colored papers you are getting all these neon colors also right so this is a very festive color of course they are celebrating so the color is very festive in nature now when you are talking about uh, the size usually we will be using words like small and big but there are so many other words so we will be usually saying correct size instead of that you can say this is the ideal size ideal size for shoes clothes of course these words you know very well words like gigantic mammoth refers to things that are very big massive big size 
miniature is very small tiny petite also refers to a very small thing something that is very small so whenever when we are describing size we can try and use these words look at this picture how will you describe this size imagine somebody gives you this how will you describe this size which word will you use in order to describe this size i'm showing you the list of words you can just go through and you can pick a word that you think is suitable to describe the picture you saw the picture a man is carrying a football i am not describing the football you are going to describe the football for me so how will you describe this football which word are you going to use i want you to type in correct spellings so let me see huge okay giant so many of you have typed the correct answers very good so this is how we should also be describing and as teachers when we are describing the sizes we will be using our gestures whenever we say small our hands automatically goes like this whenever we say huge right so this is a gigantic or this is a massive huge any word that you can use giant ball also you can use now think about the texture so indians if you see we are very conscious about texture whenever we buy anything we want to feel and see even when we buy a laptop we will be seeing what is the smooth finishing or what is the texture right so when we are buying sarees we are extra careful so women will understand what are the difficulties and the complexities involved in buying a saree so now if you see these are some of the words i know all women teachers are smiling so now if you look at these words these describe the textures leathery it is very leathery to touch slippery you know very well rough sharp silky creamy we say it is very creamy in texture squishy squishy is something that is also very creamy or like a slime fluffy we usually say for soft things furry things like when you touch a puppy or a cat grainy when the finishing is a little dust. or whenever you see a picture or you know a photo if it is not very clear when it is taken at night it will be grainy you can see small dots in it crunchy when it comes to food say this is very crunchy sticky when you are eating chocolates juicy and crispy so these are all certain words that we can use to describe the texture so now i am going to show you a picture and you are going to describe the texture for me you are going to tell me whether it is leathery rough sharp silky crunchy crispy or fluffy okay are you ready here is a picture here is a picture and you are going to describe the texture how is this texture what word will you use to describe the texture texture is also a very important word when you are describing so please use it in your vocabulary here is the list of words that i am using so all of you are very fast answers are coming in really fast yes all of you are typing the correct answers silky right so it is very silky we say 
now if you are going to describe the condition of things right sometimes we say this is dirty this is new this is old but more than that if you want to sound really interesting several words that you can use words like this is very old fashion like when you look at sari patterns or when you look at shirt models you say this is very old fashion we don't say that our sons and daughters say that very often to us i hope that is the same for you also worn out worn out shoes something that has become old and cannot be used brand new crooked crack dirty clean shiny affordable this is affordable means i can buy this this is not very expensive affordable this is very retro retro in the sense very old like old fashion it is the opposite of modern intricate when you go to the taj mahal and when you look at the patterns the carvings the paintings you said this is very intricate patterns when you go to the temples especially right so when you go to the temples you look look at the pillars of the temples and you say look at the intricate carvings of the temple and then something that is very trendy okay something that is very trendy to use all of us want to use trendy mobile phones trendy bags trendy shoes right so we can say this is very trendy now or it can be environment friendly also now this bag is very environment friendly so these are all certain words that we can use to describe the condition so let me show you a picture and i want you to choose the right word look at all the words once thoroughly look at the spellings okay here you go here is the picture for you how will you describe these bags what is the right word what is the right word from this list to describe these bags so all of you have started typing that are coming in these are affordable bags very good eco friendly environment friendly trendy yes these these bags are also trending now thank you for all your answers so now you know when you look at something how to describe it try and use these phrases try and use these words every day so that they become part of our active vocabulary very good these are environment friendly bags these are affordable bags let us move on to the next section the next section is called describing people now this is something that we do on an everyday basis we keep describing people often so these are all certain words that we will use general appearance so when it comes to general appearance we say that somebody is looking beautiful or pretty elegant look at this word elegant middle aged handsome some of you describe yourself as handsome gorgeous looking attractive or ugly right when you're talking about the build of a person build as in the body size you use these words well built muscular plump thin so these are some words that you usually use to describe the build of the person look at this word the personality i think more than the physical appearance we should focus more on describing personality so these are some words that we can use i have already shown you some words in the beginning of the session also so these are some positive words however people are not always positive right sometimes we have to describe them otherwise also when you want to discuss with your family see these are all certain qualities i don't like in you how do you describe those qualities so some of them are self obsessed they think only about them self obsession they think only about their 
problems, their gains. Some are humorless, some are dull, dishonest, unreliable. Grumpy. Grumpy means always complaining, not smiling. Inconsiderate, not thinking about others, self-centered. So these are all certain personality traits that all of us have as human beings. Now what I want you to do is talk about a person you know, describing their appearance, build and personality. So here is a sentence structure. He or she is a dash, another blank and another blank, but can be sometimes one word which describes their negative personality. Okay, you can try and write a sentence using this kind of a sentence frame to describe somebody. You can practice it later also. Describing events. So all of us attend so many events and we want to describe it as soon as we come home. So usually you use these kinds of words when you want to describe events. Ultimate, rare, divine, violent, stellar. Stellar means excellent, like a star. Common, unusual. So unusual is a word we will be using when we find something suspicious. This is a significant event, memorable possible and disastrous. So very recently we had a disaster, right, in Vishakarpat. So these are all words that you can use to describe events in order to explain their quality. Imagine you have been invited by the president of the country to receive an award. What a nice event. How will you describe this event? Okay. So how will you describe this event? What is the event? You are going to receive an award from the president of the country. So think about this event and choose one word from this picture about what you feel. There is no correct or wrong answer. Think about your feelings, how you will describe this event and please type it in the chat box. Type your answer in the chat box. What kind of event is it going to be? So all of you are, you know, smiling when you're typing this. I can see it is a stellar event. Wonderful. It's a disastrous event. Some of them have said it's a disastrous event. Disaster means dangerous, memorable, ultimate. Of course, it is an ultimate, no, right? significant, memorable, surprise. It's a divine event. So some of you think it will be a divine event. Very true. So these are some words that we can use to describe events. Thank you for all your answers. Now, I have some words. So all this time I was showing you one particular picture and I was asking you to type the describing word. Now I am doing the reverse. I am giving you some describing words. And all this describing word, all these describing words can be used to describe one particular aspect. So you can say something like, this is a very lively dash. What will come in the blank? This is a very cheerful dash, relaxing. This is very irritating dash. So which is the right word that all these words are trying to describe? I'm not giving you the word. I want you to think. That is the word romantic, relaxing, aggressive tranquil. So just think for a moment. Think for a moment and tell me which aspect or which thing all these words 
are trying to describe it's a universal aspect let me check all the emotions persons relaxing music udaya kiranalu garu the answer you have given is correct music is the answer mood so all the answers are coming in so we had the right answer from udaya kiranalu kudos this is the answer music when we are describing music we will be using all these terms very good when we are describing our routines how do we describe routines so usually as we are all teachers when we say these are some words that we are using very commonly right when you describe your routine you say i usually i usually train teachers i help children with mathematics i look after very young children when you are describing your work as teacher these are some words that we will commonly use again i am telling that these kinds of words you should be able to use when you are moving from telugu to speaking in english those who are already very good in english they will know all these words so this is for people who are trying to learn things new so when you are trying to describe your routine you will be able to use these kinds of words phrases usually i get up at 6 you can use these words have a bath get dressed wash your hair have breakfast eat breakfast grab a coffee you know because there is no time you just grab a coffee from the canteen leave get to school arrive at school it is important that you use these phrases then when you come back from school what do you do you surf the net you watch tv you catch up with friends you always do the paperwork as teachers when we come home we have lot of paperwork to do correcting the paper setting question paper assignments we also have to do the housework so homework is different from housework please remember and then we go to bed so these are all some words that we can use to explain daily routine okay so today we have seen how we can learn in a very general spoken english manner when you want to describe ideas but as teachers i know that you will be using the language function of describing in your classroom transaction more when i am talking about classroom transaction when you take a lesson there are so many aspects in the lesson which has to be described and even in the lesson there will be lot of description now say for example if the lesson is about a village there will be lot of describing words about the village in several places of the lesson in the first paragraph last paragraph it will be extremely useful for the students if you are going to make them understand and underline identify all the describing words about the village about the people about the main character in the story so how can we sensitize children to describe things so in the previous sessions we had how you can introduce so we had one teacher sheshadri garu who was explaining how you can introduce so in that particular lesson he was saying how tenali raman introduces himself and then he created a small activity where he is introducing himself and then he is building on that so tenali raman was only saying i am tenali raman i am doing this but then he added some more points like my favorite subject my favorite food so all this and then based on the modeling that he did he made the students also repeat it right 
so these kinds of small classroom transaction activities we should be able to do based on the textbook because when we try and follow the textbook because the textbook has been written after a lot of research every sentence in the textbook has a reason to be there so as teachers we must try and find out the reasons we must try and present the ideas in a very clear manner so today again we have another teacher who will be explaining us how to describe how to teach students description when we are trying to handle a lesson so when we are handling a lesson how can we use the lesson become a rich resource for children to learn describing right so over to you i am going to stop sharing my screen i hope uh, samata garu is ready ismail sir unmute sir shall i start start speak share screen all that yes just uh, just a moment sir yes sir yeah. am i not visible okay sir shall i start my session yes ma'am you start start the session okay sir good morning my dear friends i am samata working as a secondary grade teacher in mandal parishad pradhamika patsala nalderu anandapuram mandal visakhapatnam district now i am going to talk about classroom transaction before going to that i will just show you the road map of today's session today what we are going to uh, see about how to create a dynamic description using the descriptive language like adjectives adverbs gerunds and also we'll see some of the strategies to improve our descriptive skills and later classroom activities let me start with the classroom activity classroom transaction i will take class 3 subject english and the lesson is the recipe book before going to the topic i will engage our children into my lesson and i will start with warm up activity like uh, i will make a uh, uh, to sing a rhyme or here i will ask some riddles like for example uh, the riddle related to a uh, lesson uh, like ikkada uh, for example this is a round and round uh, red in color and juicy what is that i will ask uh, then children may uh, say it is uh, um, like a tomato yes and then uh, like i can ask like rectangular shape and it is it helps in cooking and when we let it flame will come what is that they could say it is a gas stove so i am making the students to engage into my lesson the recipe book and then i will show the trigger picture trigger picture helps us uh, to introduce the lesson and it also helps to engage the children into a topic and the uh, trigger picture Which also uh, make the children uh, to aware of the uh, new topic or uh, revise the old lesson. For example, in our lesson, the recipe book, I will show this trigger picture and I will ask the students to observe this picture carefully and say few uh, like I will ask questions like, "What did you see uh, in the right hand of that girl? What the girl is holding in her hand?" Like they can say that. uh some a spoon or like that and then uh, i can also ask like uh, what are the uh, list some of the things at least five things you can see in that picture then children will easily observe the picture and they will answer in this manner i will motivate the children into my lesson this is called as a pre reading activity trigger picture helps to draw their attention towards the lesson later i will go into the lesson that is a reading part 
ఇప్పుడు రీడింగ్ పార్ట్ లో లెసన్ టోటల్ గా నేను చదువుతాను ఐ విల్ రీడ్ అండ్ ఐ విల్ మేక్ ద చిల్డ్రన్ టు లిజన్ టు మై లెసన్ యాక్టివ్లీ లైక్ ఇన్ బిట్వీన్ ఇలా అడగచ్చు లైక్ వెన్ దే కమ్ మై across the words uh, which are used in kitchen uh, like stove knife ila even a words confused they have to clap their hands in this manner if i uh, read the lesson they will listen to me that will be active participation this is called as a active listening right so um, later i will explain the lesson here i made a video for this uh, which is an audio video visual which help the student to uh, uh, engage effectively and uh, they can understand the lesson so let me uh, share one video which is prepared by me i tried it uh, i want to share this video to all of you the recipe book once there lived a man named raju he owned a small hotel Everyone who visited his hotel liked the food as it was very delicious and tasty. One day he got a big order but unfortunately he fell ill. He started to cook but suddenly he fainted. Recipe book saw this. Recipe book said, "My dear friends, our Raju fell ill and he is on bed and unable to cook food." I want to help me the pot said I'm big enough to prepare rice for the party mixture I can grind things that you need for the cooking in minutes knife came and said I can slice and dice the vegetables finally stove came and said hello can I help you they started cooking and prepared all dishes for dinner Raju woke up and surprised to see the food was ready for the party and tasted delicious. He looked at the recipe book and said, "Who help you in cooking?" Recipe book pointed all of them. Finally, Raju thanked everyone for preparing such a wonderful and delicious food. this is the video this video helps the student to understand the lesson uh, uh, very easily and they will engage in the lesson because they got habit to watch so many comic stories right uh, so in this manner i will make the children to engage into my lesson and now um, i will um, ask the questions related to this pic- uh, video like uh, i will uh, show the video once again without the subtitles ante ee sari nenu subtitles kendana ostunna subtitles anni i will remove the subtitles and i will ask them to describe the picture initially they may say only words for example first picture uh, my name is raju uh, and second picture lo i owned a small hotel they can't make a full sentence but they can say that uh, raju and a hotel so later stages they will develop Uh, to frame a meaningful sentences in this way i will encourage my students to develop their describing skill with the lesson and also i will ask them uh, like uh, i will also one type of activity this is i will show now this is a type of role play um, which is between customer and raju customer is calling raju and raju is responding in the phone call uh let's see i will give the text you just guess what will be the answers in the text for example i will also give the answers first guess the answers for example raju is uh, got a phone call and raju is saying hello customer said hello is it raju raju replied yes raju speaking then customer said can you take an order for the birthday party then raju replied yes can you tell me the date then customer said for the next sunday raju replied yeah sure how many plates required for the dinner customer said 500 plates and then raju replied okay 
come in the evening. Please pay the bill in advance. Then customer ended by saying, okay, thank you. This is the type of role play. I will ask the students to act like customer and Raju. I will make some more uh, like role plays, some more activities like this uh, related to the topic describing and I will take some context from the lesson itself. And then as Madam explained everything about the adjectives, adjectives are the describing words as we know. And uh, like I will uh, say, uh, uh, tell you about uh, some describing adjectives uh, in uh, in the context of objects how can we describe the objects uh, even an object described chetanki there are several things ways to describe an object firstly we will describe its physical appearance for example then a handbag i lost my handbag then how can i say like first then size for some algorithm right whether it is big one small one medium size handbag i lost and then we will talk about its shape like we know very well uh, whether it is a rectangular square one oval one and so many we can talk about and another thing we can uh, talk about its color and then if you want to add more details to your description you can talk about its material like uh, for example my handbag it is made up of a leather one or another like uh, uh, plastic or earthenware, clay, mud, we can talk about its material also. And then texture. Texture means whether it is a smooth one, soft one, rough, hard, and so on. And lastly, we can talk about cost, uh, whether it is a cheaper one, whether it is an expensive or affordable thing, like that. And coming to describing people. Describe Chiali. First, manik mind lo flash hai yadi, physical appearance, right? So, physical appearance for smart lad. First, we will talk about their height, like whether she is a tall woman or a short one, and like uh, 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 weight. We can also talk about their weight. She is slim. Uh, he is overweight. Uh, he is muscly. Like that, we can talk about their physical appearance. And then coming to the age. Age ko some matla dalante, like we can talk about like his kind of a uh, middle age, old man or young age or around 30s, about 30s and so on. And clothing, to talk about the clothing, we say present continuous tense, like something uh, she is wearing a cream color sari with jacket. He is wearing a yellow color uh, jeans with a blue color shirt and so on. Attractiveness, like she is pretty, she is gorgeous, he is handsome. We can talk about like this. And personality, this is very important quality everyone have to have. Like someone will be honest man, he is a funny man, and uh, uh, he is optimistic, is pessimistic, and so on. We can talk about their personality. And now let me uh, talk about how to describe event. Like to describe any event, we have to talk about what the event was and when the event was happened and where it happened and how the event was happened and why the event, particular event was happened. We can talk about all this. So here, to coming to our topic, uh, the recipe book. To explain the recipe book, I have taken some screenshots from our lesson and I have the sentences which describe the adjectives. For example, see the thing, uh, second sentence, he owned a small hotel. Here, small is a describing. small hotel So, describe just the hotel. So, small adjective. Uh, and so on. In Andi highlight chess petano, everyone who visited his hotel liked the food as it was very tasty. It could a tasty adjective, adverb, very, and bulk orders, quiet worry. And see, next screenshot here. This is all our text which is given in our textbook about the recipe book. Next is Cholni. He is on bed and he's not able to cook food for the big party. 
పార్టీ ఎలాంటి పార్టీ ఇట్స్ బిగ్ పార్టీ సో పార్టీని డిస్క్రైబ్ చేస్తుంది సో ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో అబ్జెక్టివ్ ఇన్ దిస్ వే వీ కెన్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ద డిస్క్రైబింగ్ థింగ్స్ డిస్క్రైబింగ్ లాంగ్వేజ్ లైక్ టువర్ చిల్డ్రన్ బై యూజింగ్ ద సెంటెన్సెస్ ఫ్రమ్ ద కాంటెక్స్ట్ అండ్ రాజు టేస్టెడ్ ద ఫుడ్ అండ్ ఇట్ వాస్ డెలీషియస్ ఫుడ్ ని డిస్క్రైబ్ చేస్తుంది చాలా టేస్టీ వెరీ డెలీషియస్ so it is also an adjective and lastly raju thanked them all for preparing such a delicious dinner how the dinner was it was very delicious so ila madam pillalaki describing things explain chese tappudu lesson lo unni teesukoni explain chestu valiki adjective ni introduce chestam and then nenu generally na classroom lo ee trip ni tip ni use chesanu it came out very well like uh, i asked my ch- children to supply one describing word before they uh, name for example first na question cheptanu and samatha for example smiley samatha ani pettukunna and for example shobha madam she uh, she is parking shobha uh, and srinu uh, super srinu ila prathi child ki they have to supply one describing word b- before their Uh, name so that they will understand describing is nothing but adjective and telustundi uh, and you know only adjectives uh, is there any other describing language to make our description more effective uh, like uh, before going to that uh, see this practice describing mana classroom lo pillalaki describing ela practice cheyistam ante see i will make whole class into face idder idder ni nen chestanu i will ask one five to come friend and i will display the pictures like chondi munde select cheskon pettukovali display chestunnan like example raju picture describe chestanu the one who watches who sees the picture have to describe and the other one they have to guess like uh, the one who can see the picture have to describe in his own words tan sonta matala raju ni describe chestar english lo and the other one have to guess and give the answer in this manner i will make the class engage in the um, in, into my lesson and i will improve their describing skill for example raju he is waving his hand he is a man who has got a small hotel ila babu uh, uh, the student will explain will describe and the other one will guess see like this in our same textbook we have all these pictures i used uh, and i will display all these pictures in front of the class and i will make the children to engage to draw their attention towards me and uh, i will continue this activity in this manner we can make the activity and now is there any other thing to describe the uh, describe any subject for example if you want to describe any subject you have used adjective inka emaina unnaya well high level english speakers generally use adverbs and gerunds to make the description more effective and, and they will make the description a dynamic one avi entante let me uh, give a brief discussion a brief idea of the other descriptive languages like gerund for example gerund is a verb which functions as a noun i will uh, show this illustration and i'll explain this for example in this example in spite of missing the train we arrived on time and had a wonderful visit with my family in vijayawada okay here gerund is missing here it is used to describe the experience of that uh, particular event with vividness right and then we can also use adverb to make our descriptive scene the remember the purpose of the adverb is to describe the uh, things like how uh, where it has happened how the event was happened to what extent it was happened ilaga for example a situation teeskunna ikkada un concert ku vellano akkada jarigina situation nenu explain chestunnanu i loved the concert singer sang too loudly okay here loudly modifies the verb sang right and to is also an adverb which modifies to what extent the singing was degree right so these two adverbs helps the description more vividly and uh, to describe in a clear and accurate manner ardham ayyadandi so mana adjectives e kaakunda 
adverbs, gerunds koda mana description la use ches tu mana description ni inka clear ga dynamic ga tayar ches kochu. Ikkada um, I would like to quote one thing in this situation. Key to excellence is practice. So whatever we learn in this webinar classes or anywhere, we have to practice it. And we have to internalize the things. And now we got a ample time in this lockdown period. So we can practice the things and we can develop our descriptive skills. Here, I would like to give some strategies how to develop your descriptive skills. Let me go and see what are the strategies. First strategy is pick a subject that interests you. If you have a interest in a subject, you can pick pictures. For example, a, a, a dream, dream house which you want to buy, or a vacation you want to dream, uh, you want, uh, you're dreaming to take it. Or lockdown time here, now your present situation, how it is. And before, like we are, we used to go to school in the morning and come to home at five o'clock. So there is vast difference color. So uh, these situations, either me interest in a situation, me need to select this only. And then next one, identify the verbs. So our situation low a verbs well time. For example, in uh, man lesson, the recipe book low. Uh, Raju um, uh, was a man. He owned a small hotel and he supplies. Bulk orders. Ikada owned is a verb and supplies also verb. So a particular lesson of e verbs and me selectures kuna subject lo what the verbs will be. You choose before itself. And now third one, gather some adjectives, gerunds, and um, adverbs. These are the descriptive language as we know. So uh, for example, uh, mana uh, uh, recipe book. Adjectives uh, like uh, uh, it's a big. The food was delicious. Delicious food is an adjective. Party, big party or small party. So party is an So a context is We have to choose the uh, and make out a list of your favorite adjectives and write it down in a notes. And then last law, what we have to do is. Organize and structure those sentences. If you want to choose subject, verbs, and descriptive language. Now we have to learn how to make a meaningful sentence. Uh, like subject, verb, agreement, principles. So uh, for this, I will uh, tell you, uh, explain you with one tab table here. Uh, see, I made a table. Uh, first column, low, I kept all the subject. And then in the middle, there is a main verb. And then descriptive verb. Uh, gerunds. And last final uh, right, uh, right side, I kept one more column for the nouns which we wish to describe. And first example, children. Raju owned a small hotel. Here, Raju is a noun. Owned is a verb. A small, it is a descriptive uh, word, adjective, and hotel. Hotel is a noun. Okay. And the second example, food tastes delicious. Food is a subject. Taste is a main uh, verb. And delicious is a descriptive word, adjective, as you all know. And last one, he supplied bulk orders. So, in this way, we will uh, make our sentences by practicing in a tabular form. Let me quick review all the four strategies. Samta First Garo. thing, we have to answer. Garo, try to uh, complete your session as well. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, first thing we have we have to identify the verb and then we have to create a uh, like a descriptive language and finally we have to make our um, uh, uh, like organize the sentences so this way we can develop the uh, descriptive skills ourselves and finally here i would like to share one video uh, i felt which is very effective to use in your classroom also sir shall i sh uh, share video yeah, sure ma'am yeah, sure, man. Question me. Today's category is classroom objects. Remember, I'll give you the description and you ask the question. Are you ready? Let's do it. So this is the first object. It is small. It is rectangular and made of metal. 
¿Y si era Charpener? ¡Awesome! ¡Excelente job! The next object. They're irregular and they're made of plastic and metal. Aren't they scissors? Great! Very well done! The last object. It is white, it is sticky, and it is liquid. Is it blue? Amazing job! Congratulations, Michelle! I think you find this video effective, a useful in your classroom, so we can take so many videos from the YouTube and we can play to our students. My main thing is that my circumstances, low situations, authentic material, pillal nadigi tis kochi. Our material use chest to classroom be descriptive, uh, more effective the chest code. So ultimate aim of every teacher is to provide a strong pedestal to every learner to come out with their own ideas and thoughts. So I will I would like to conclude my session with a quote. If you uh, you have to go into anything wholeheartedly in order to achieve anything worth having. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, SCRP. Thank you, Samadha Garu. That was a good presentation. Ishmael Garu, can we have some questions? Yes, ma'am, sure. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Samta Garu. Uh, nice presentation. Uh, and your Anandapura Mandal teachers conveying you, uh, they are very proud and they, they are thanking you also. Yes. So, ma'am, uh, Nilavenu Garu, uh, again uh, requesting to explain or uh, give some examples for the end. Gerunds. For gerunds. Okay. Now, gerunds, as uh, Samata has rightly pointed out, these are verbs, but then they do the job of a noun. Now, say for example, if I tell you reading is a good habit. Now, the main verb in that particular sentence is is. Reading is a good habit. But you might be wondering, reading also looks like a verb. To read is a verb. But here, reading is the habit. So it becomes, it performs the job of a noun there. So that is a gerund. Swimming is good for health. So swimming there becomes a noun. So there is a lot of information on this. If you can try and explore whether it is a books or internet, you should be able to get it. And we can use these gerunds also in our daily spoken language. Thank you, Thank very you much, for madam. that question. Thank you, madam. Thanks for this nice answer also. Uh, Ms. Madhavi, uh, she's asking that what is the difference between positive thinking and optimistic thinking? As I said earlier, English has a rich repository of words. So there are a lot of synonyms. In the previous session, we had one question like what is the difference between a dictionary and a thesaurus? Now, thesaurus will be able to give us a lot of synonyms. Positive and optimistic are both synonyms. They can be used interchangeably. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, again, another such question, Siswara or Atu. What is the difference between homework and uh, housework? <laughs> I think I explained yeah. it very clearly. Yeah. When you say homework, <laughs> teachers, we give our children homework. But housework, as teachers, we go to our homes and we do the housework. Uh, Another question is from Karna Sagar. Could you please uh, give some examples or uh, tell me uh, which type of words we need to use to describe about our own feelings? Okay. Now, this is a very deep question, I would say. When you're describing your feelings, it is not very easy. If you look at movies, you know, to describe the feeling, there are so many songs and so many words in your mother tongue. Similarly, in English also, if you can refer to the feelings wheel I gave you, in the feelings wheel, there are so many words that can describe your feelings. So please go back to your uh, reading material. There, there is a feelings wheel, which I have used to describe your emotions. You should be able to get many words to describe the right emotion. Thank you so much, ma'am. Today, uh, Kanalu uh, is asking, Madam, uh, some simple situations where we can 
I mean, for the rural students, how to describe the things about uh, this question is some confusing. Let me give some time. No, oh, I understood the question. Yes. Uh, I read the question also. Udya Kiranalu has asked how to create classroom situations for the rural students. Now, yes. as Samata also explained, the textbook itself contains a lot of situations. Based on the textbook, if we start describing, if we do the classroom transaction, lot of situations can be created. He doesn't have to worry about creating extra situations. You look at the textbook itself, you will get lot of situations to teach them descriptive skills. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you so much. And so many things already you have covered many doubts what you posted now in the comment session already you have covered in your talk yes. so uh, really amazing presentation and um, i have me to learning many things in this uh, conversations thanks for giving such opportunity i thank our government of uh, andhra pradesh also for the same uh, for this uh, amazing presentation and fantastic uh, topic uh, and I convey our thanks, sincere thanks to Dr. Shobha Garu uh, from Anna University. As well, uh, I also thank uh, a new resource person, <laughs> Ms. Samatha Garu from MPPS, uh, Samatha Garu from MPPS School, uh, Neteru, Anand from Mandalam, Vishak Patnam. Thank you very much. You are teaching the teachers also really posting a lot of things for you. So thank you very much. Uh, Thank you so much to one and all, and uh, we'll wait for tomorrow's topic. Uh, thanks for, and we'll signing out for today. Thank you. Thank you.